Christ commands all men everywhere to repent. The Father of Jesus also commands you to repent. Jesus, when walking the streets of Israel, He commanded men to repent and to believe. It is true, unless if you repent, you will perish. Jesus, when speaking to the churches, one of the churches he rebuked, and with such wording, those I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You must have zeal toward God. Fear God, repent. It is written, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. If you're not willing to fear God, if you're not willing to repent of all your sins, you can in no way be saved. Jesus Christ is the mediator between you and the Father. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified if you want to get to the Father through Jesus, you need to not be a wicked person in your deeds. It is written, the Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayer of the righteous. You know it's true deep down that you have no connection with God while you're in your sins. That's why you feel dead in those sins. God is love, and God is light. In God, there is no darkness at all. So if you're doing evil deeds, if you're sinning, you know that you don't have Jesus. For Jesus Christ teaches that there's 12 hours in the day. If a man walk in the day, stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. See, when you walk in darkness, you stumble, because there's no light in you. That's why the Apostle Paul teaches we are children of the day. That's why we're sober. All drunks will not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of Jesus and all the power of the kingdom and that kingdom you must be righteous to enter therein. Let no man deceive you. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Jesus Christ. 
If you're in sin, you will not see God. There shall be one king over the earth. Yahweh shall be king. You can rule as a king and a priest with him, but there will be one head. And Jesus will not make a mistake. Jesus says that it's an abomination for a king to commit wickedness. It is written in the Proverbs, it's an abomination for a king to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. Also know that it is written, if you justify the wicked, it's an abomination before God. Jesus will not justify the wicked. It'd be an abomination. Jesus does not condemn the just either. If you come to Jesus with repentance and you circumcise your heart, you stop sinning. If a man does that which is lawful and right, if a man repents and has faith, You can be justified. Real faith looks like that. It's 100% pure. You gotta have real faith. Faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Even Abraham, the father of the faith, when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar, you see by this work, his faith was made perfect. Jesus teaches a disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Jesus teaches, be you therefore perfect, okay. as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus, when examining the churches, to one of the churches, he says, I do not find your works perfect before God. Jesus sees all your sins. Jesus is the messenger sent by the Father. He encamps around those that fear Him. Do you fear God? The Father sent His Son to bless you, to turn you from your iniquities. Or will you turn from them? Jesus is the judge of quick and of dead. I think we go after this. Press the button. Jesus is the one appointed by the Father the Father will judge your secrets by Jesus Christ this according to the gospel that Paul preached 
Being saved by grace does not contradict this. In fact, if sinners entice you, do not consent to them. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Forsake not the law of thy mother. There is an ornament of grace. See, you need to have grace that aligns with the Word of God. You want to be able to read the words that come from the Holy Ghost and to see if you're actually in the faith. You can't have grace without going through faith. And you can't have faith unless if you repent. So will you give up all sin, sir? Will you give up all sin? That's the question, sir, on the bike. Will you give up all sin? You should give up all sin just by your conscience. For God saith, those that despise their neighbor's sin, it's very hateful to sin, so stop. Just stopping is not enough, though, to be forgiven. You need to have faith in the Son of God. It's only normal that if God commands you not to sin, and God commands you to believe the Son of God, it's just a one and two step. Today is the day of your salvation. Repentance of dead works and of faith toward God. Anything that is lawless, sin is transgression of God's law. All these things are dead works. You could work for God instead. But Jesus Christ, even after sending out laborers, into the harvest, into the vineyard. Even Jesus finds the complaints if you backslide. Even Jesus will say, why is your eye evil? Because I am good. And Jesus teaches, if you have an evil eye, your heart's defiled. And if your eye be evil, your whole body is full of darkness. Think about that. Great deception. A many saved sinners in the church. Covetous. If the light that you think you have is darkness, oh, how great is that darkness. Don't be deceived. Those that are righteous are the ones that are doing righteous as Jesus is righteous. And they that commit sin are of the devil. It's a great salvation being preached that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. You can be pure. You can be as a child. You can be innocent. I care about you. You need to repent. Jesus teaches a 
allow the little children. Do not forbid them. For such is the kingdom of God. Jesus teaches, unless if you're going to humble yourself and be as this little child, you can't enter, you can't see the kingdom of God. Which makes sense because the Lord teaches, except a man be born again, he can't see, he can't enter into the kingdom of God. You must be born of water and of spirit. With what water are you born of if you're still in sin and filthy in sin? It's not the water that comes from God. And with what spirit are you born of if you're in the flesh? For you must be led of the spirit. And you must be outside of the works of the flesh. It's the flesh that lusts against the spirit. And bless God for the grace of God in me and the Holy Ghost preaching against sin. The spirit in me is against the flesh and the deeds thereof. If you have a carnal mind, it's death. It's enmity with God. It's God's enemy. It's very practical when you think about it. Why would God want you to focus on the flesh? The lust of concupiscence. The pleasures of sin for a season. When you must put off this flesh and be raised from the dead to come back with Jesus Christ when all the saints will come with Him. 1 Thessalonians 3.13 For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication. All sexual sin will send you to hell. If you are in these sins, you can repent. But you have to mortify, therefore, that member. It's upon the earth. That will not see heaven. For even the church sinners know that no sin, well, some of them, no sin can enter heaven. So why do they think a sinner will? And church hypocrites think, well, I'll put off my body and finally I'll stop sinning when I get to my immortal body. Well, what will you do in the interim? If you die in faith, you're absent from the body, present with the Lord. What are you going to be doing in heaven? Will you be sinning? Of course not. Will you be a robot? No. So you ought to have the mind of Christ today. To know how to worship God in spirit and truth. For Jesus Christ says and He speaks, we know who we worship. Salvation is of the Jew. And Paul taught a Jew is not one that is outward, but that which is inward. And that circumcision is of the heart in the spirit, whose praise is not of men but of God. A God will not praise and be in this praise. You cannot praise God in sin. Jesus Christ is not your worship leader if you're in sin. Jesus Christ can declare your name and confess your name before His Father. Will you stand justified by Jesus? 
Jesus teaches for backsliders, if you deny him, he will deny you. Jesus is honest. Imagine that Jesus Christ would confess a backslider before the Father. He would then have to deny himself. He would have to deny the very words he speaks. It is written in the prophets. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. If you forsake Jesus, he'll cast you off forever. That's fair. Jesus is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus saved Noah. Noah was a man perfect in his generations. Guess on the one that made it into the ark. It was Noah. Noah was the one who made it in. Noah did the work. Noah found grace. Noah was a preacher. Noah knew God. He's the heir of righteousness by faith. Noah was not a sinner. Sinners do not enter therein. In a figure, Baptism does now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God. This through the resurrection of Jesus. If your old man is crucified with Jesus, and you've been buried with Jesus in baptism unto death, and you're raised up from the dead in newness of life, why are you walking in sin? If your pastor is a sinner, you're being beguiled of God. Church sinners have a sinner for a pastor. And this pastor is a hireling. He's doing it for Christ. And maybe he doesn't get a paycheck, or he's doing it for praise. If he ain't doing it for that, he's still a sinner. And Peter teaches that there shall be false teachers among you. Who bring in damnable heresy. These have eyes full of adultery, they cannot cease from sin. You need to recognize the gospel the Bible teaches. The gospel is taught in the fear of God, in the judgment of God. The gospel is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom, his appearing and his kingdom. And Jesus Christ is coming back to destroy all sinners. If you preach the gospel of the kingdom and you believe the gospel of the kingdom, you by necessity must believe that I cannot be a sinner and be saved by this gospel. If you have the kingdom of God within you. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But righteousness. Peace, love, any fruit of the spirit. But most importantly, the Holy Ghost.
Do you have the washing of regeneration? Do you have the renewing of the Holy Ghost? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hate what the Lord hates. Love what Jesus loves. Jesus is against Unitarians, Oneness, Save Sinners, Calvinists, Zionists. Jesus Christ stands a witness against them. Through not adhering to his teachings, through not being saved, not learning from the Holy Ghost. For it is written, you have an unction with the Holy One, you know all things. You don't need that any man should teach you. So you might be paying your tithe, and keeping up your membership in a local cult. But it's not saving you. Jesus teaches that a man cannot live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You have to give all the counsel of God. Do not shun that. Receive that. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily.